No, I don't want to drop names, but there I was talking to Mel Gibson. Right. Um, and he was full of praise for you. And he said, he said not only because of, of what you brought to the sound, but he said that there were some moments when you would do something totally unpredictable, like in a battle scene, you'd drop out the sound, and the only thing you hear is a flag flapping, or, or you hear the uh, sound of one bullet hitting, hitting a, a helmet. Uh, well, yeah, uh, thanks for Mel for saying that, by the way. That's awfully nice of him. Uh, you know, uh, the whole second half of the movie is, is battle. Uh, the story is this Desmond Doss character was a pacifist, and uh, he was a selfless guy who di uh, just didn't believe in violence but wanted to serve his country. So, uh, you know, he went to, to great lengths to do that and ended up in the Battle of Okinawa, which is one of the bloodiest battles uh, of Japan in World War II. And when Desmond entered, which you just saw, into that battle, I mean, he literally was hit with a barrage of hell. And the way Mel shot it, you can see, it was consistent with uh, the War is Hell uh, narrative. And, and it was our job to literally put the audience on that battlefield to give Andrew Garfield a backdrop from which to perform. Because um, in reality, the uh, battle scenes are, 90, are shot, 90% uh, of the sound is unusable. The only parts during those entire battles that were used uh, from production were some of the dialogue tracks. The explosions uh, were these little uh, uh, explosion boxes that uh, sounded more like firecrackers uh, than explosions. They looked cool, but they didn't sound cool. The guns were props, they sounded like cap guns. And, uh, and, and all the muzzle flashes were all just visual effects, so they really weren't even firing guns. So it was up to the sound team to put the audience on that battlefield. You can't sustain a battle for an hour without having some moments to fall back on. So uh, obviously we picked and chose our moments carefully for which we could tone the battle down and focus just on a few elements at a time. Uh, because, uh, well, just uh, seeing that, that footage there, because you were working weeks at a time, look, watching heads explode and stuff. Mm -hmm. do, do, does work like that ever get under your skin or do you just think this is great makeup? I'd like to give you a serious answer and say, yeah, it's tough, but it really isn't. I'll tell you, when you're working with Mel Gibson, it's a lot of fun. And, and even though the subject material is tough, we, we, uh, we, we, we try, to, try to make as, as light of it as we can. Uh, we know it's our, we have one opportunity to sell the audience on what's happening. And I'll just give you a quick example. There's a few scenes in the movie where people are being uh, torched with flamethrowers. And the sound guys, uh, you know, have this great sound of that flamethrower. Uh, and, and, and what Mel would do is he'd listen to it, he goes, guys, the sound of that flamethrower is great, but just after that flame shoots out of the gun, I want you to turn down the sound of the flamethrower and turn up the sound of the guys getting cooked. He goes, because that's the sound that's going to make the audience get on the edge. And that's the way Mel is, you know. He's an emotional guy. I'll give you just one more quick example if you want. Just after this big battle, there's a very quiet scene where Andrew Garfield and Luke Bracey are hunkered down in a foxhole. And it's very quiet, very quiet at night. And, uh, and Andrew's uh, sharing some stories about uh, when he grew up. And a moment there, he falls back and he starts to fall asleep when all of a sudden he's surprised by a Japanese so soldier who shoots his head up over the berm. Well, we couldn't figure out exactly what the right sound was to, to kind of, you know, scare the audience there. We, the sound designers couldn't come up with it and the composer couldn't come up with it. So Mel says, hey, can I give it a try? And so we said, okay. So we handed Mel a microphone, we ran him the scene. As Soon as the Japanese soldier popped his head up, Mel goes into the, into the microphone. We took that sound, we put it in all 56 speakers in the theater and we played it cranked up the level, and trust me, the first time we played it, it scared the crap out of all of us, too. <laughs> and that's the kind of Mel, guy Mel is. He figures out emotionally what he wants from the scene, and he figures out a way to get it, even if he has to do it himself. <laughs>